Hi, and welcome to another lesson of the Excel for Absolute Beginners course. In this lesson, which is lesson 16 of the course, we are looking at the various number types in Excel, and we are going to explore each of them, or the most commonly used ones, which include general numbers, date, currency, time, scientific notation, percentage, and fraction. So let's get into the spreadsheet to see how each of these are used. Here is a spreadsheet with numbers, various tests scattered on it, but I'm going to take my time to explain each of them. Excel actually gives us the ability to use different uh, number formats, all right? And to begin with, by default, any test that you write in Excel is under the general format so that is what you usually see how do you know that it is the general one that you are using when you come to the ribbon under the number the number group which is also under the home tab so click on home tab and check under number group you'll find general here okay but we can also click this to expand and find the on the format cell or the various categories of numbers that we can have we are going to explore each of them but as i said the general is what it comes by default so if you haven't applied any special number type or category to the test or numbers that you've written in excel then they come in the form of general however excel is quite smart and sometimes will automatically pick up the kind of number that you are writing so for instance even though we may be using general by default if i type anytime i type a name okay and when i type a number you realize that there is a difference between these two even though it is still general so this is general as you can see it is general that we are using then here too is also general but excel has already determined or detect that this is numbers and this is text how do we know that see how it has oriented them or aligned them so anytime there is text in excel it is aligned to the left and numbers are aligned to the right that is how to spot what whether what you have is a text or a, a, is a number so if i go ahead and write any text aligned to the left if i write a number aligned to the right so always pay attention to that but for now you haven't specifically told excel that this is test and this is numbers all right so that should be taken note of but with numbers for instance as i said if it is a number then it's going to go to the right but let's do this put an apostrophe in front of a number and click on it anytime you put an apostrophe in front of a number the number is that is to tell excel that this number that i'm writing is actually a test and not a number so for instance this comes in handy when you're writing telephone numbers if i want to write my telephone number in this regards then i can use that if i go ahead and write it without the apostrophe excel is going to treat it as numbers uh, like a number and we all know that numbers do not start with zeros okay so a whole number will not have zero as a starting number so excel is going to ignore that starting zero all right but if you want the starting zero to be there then you have to forcefully tell excel that this has to be in a test format for that matter you introduce the apostrophe in front of it and it will make it into test all right, the next set is numbers itself. So with numbers, we can have decimal numbers. So anytime you write a number, you want to explicitly tell Excel that this is a number, then you want to use the drop down handler here. Just click on it, then choose number. So when you choose number, you are allowed to choose the format what format do you want it to take how many decimal numbers so if you want some decimals you can choose a here so this is the sample that you are being showed up here 
the number of decimal places that you want if you don't want any decimal places then you can set it to zero and if the number has thousands in it what do you want are you going to separate it with the comma or not so if you want then you go ahead and click it so this is 202 now let's change the number to 2200 or something like this and click outside so you realize that it has separated a thousand that's 22,201 decimal place and now this has changed from general to number because you have told excel that we want to deal directly with numbers All right the next thing that is test i've talked about test already almost anything at all that you write will be in the form of test so you can just go ahead or let's say this one just go ahead and choose test right here and as you can see it is in the form of test so if you had some numbers in here that excel is treating as number and for that matter is not showing the leading zero then you can go there and say hey i want this to be test so leave it as test once it's done as test, I can come in to edit and put a zero in front of it, and that also works. But also take note of this green at the top here. There is a green mark at the top here. Anytime you see that, then it's telling you that the number you have is likely to be test or is test for that matter. Okay, the next thing to look at is currency obviously when you are using your excel for calculations one of the common things you encounter is using it for uh, calculations involving money and you need to specify the specific currency that you are using for that matter if i have let's say a sales uh, spreadsheet that i'm working on i'm going to have something like the cost of items so in in my country we use ghana city so if i want to apply my ghana city symbol to it so that everybody knows that these are the prices in ghana cities then how do you go about it select the cell that you want to apply that format to click on this to activate the format cells then choose currency currency is right here you also allow to choose the number of decimal places that you want to place it then the symbol so choose the symbol there are a lot of them here you can choose a dollar any of them for there are a lot of them but i want to go with ghana city because i'm in ghana right now so click ok and as you can see ghana cities has been applied to this so unlike uh, if i want to apply to all of them i can easily select all or i can even decide to select the whole column then apply the formatting to the whole column the way i want it this means that anytime i type any number in here it will automatically pick up the unit that i have inputted okay so that is for currency now let's look like at the next one time 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 so if you have any form of time let's say 1250 excel is also picking this probably as a number but as you can see this is custom because of the column that is there ideally would have picked it as a general but for now it's not seeing it as time so we have to explicitly tell excel that hey this is time that i'm indicating to do that we click here and choose time time then choose the format that you want your time to be in and this format is presented based on your location so the locale set on your computer and as i said earlier i am currently in ghana so you can see that my locale is english ghana and for that matter this is how we our time is presented we have the hour the minute and the second before the unit so if your your country isn't presented like that then you may have something different but you choose the type that you want do you want it with the unit here do you want a second or any of them that you want so go ahead and click it and as you can see now it's being recognized as time right here okay then let's go back the next date all right date date is also a very common data format that you'll be using a lot so today's date is 15th of may 15th may 2022 and 
I said Excel is very smart in that whenever you write a date, it automatically picks that this is a date that you've written and it has assigned it to custom. And you see that at the top here, it is written in the form of a date, okay? So, but if I want, I will explicitly tell Excel that this is a date by choosing this and choosing how I want it to be presented. So if I want the day to come in, then I choose this and go ahead. You realize that when I was writing the date, I didn't include Sunday, but it's telling me that today is Sunday. Okay, I could also write my date in the form of 20, uh, let's say 10, 2022 20, and let's see it's not able to pick this as date it sees it as general but let's go ahead and select date so let's try another one and see if i go with 20 10 2022 okay okay so you realize that this has been applied to that cell because it was there. I applied it there, fortunately. So let's try again 20 or uh, dash 10 dash 2022. So there is also another date format. And if I want to tell Excel that it's date, so it has already picked it as date, but I have to choose the format that I want. If I want it in this format, then it writes it in that format for me. So you can play around with the date and get any type of dates you want. Percentages. So let's talk about percentages and fraction all together. When we talk about percentages, let's assume you have 0.4 that is the number that you have and you want to convert it into its rightful percentage just select it click this to activate the format cell dialog box and choose percentage tell us how many decimal places you want to capture if none then none this is 40 percent so we'll convert it to the percentage for you if it's 0 0.004 or whatever value it is go ahead and convert it to a percentage so that is 0 0.24 in the same way we can have this converted to fraction sorry i applied i forgot to apply the currency to that one you can have this converted to fraction and by fraction you just have to select this and select fraction and choose the way you want it or the style that you want it so this is one whole number one over five let's do that of 0 0.2 0 0.2 is going to give us what in fraction you find out right now one out of five so that is how to play around with fractions as well with the numbers i forgot to talk extensively about the decimal places so let's just assume this if we want to have decimal places right now it's just in general but we want it to pick numbers and have a set of decimal places so for now it has two decimal places and as you can see but right here even if we're not opening the format cell dialog you can use this to increase and decrease like these two to increase and decrease the number of decimal places so these are quite easy to use and the percentage sign to a here that you can use all right the comma style as i've told you with apostrophe you use it to convert a number into text okay then scientific one two so you realize that this number is quite long and uh, when you change this even though at the moment it's in the form of a number when you change it to scientific notation let, let me do it and you see those of you who have science background will understand this so we have the scientific notation and that is where you have e raised the power something or it, yes so this long number as you can see in the formula bar right now when we convert it to the scientific notation becomes 2.56 e plus 20 okay so that is scientific notation and if you happen to be dealing with that sort of data this will make sense to you so these are the various formats of numbers that you are likely to encounter on a regular basis whilst using excel and i hope you understand them from this lesson you need to play around them the more to appreciate how to use each of them thank you for watching and i'll see you in the next lesson bye